be cool if right. it's planned. Ocean if it's planned. Now I'm only at 200, so I'm going to go to maybe 300 here and let this thing finish simulating. And the white particles are the particles that are moving. The blue particles are more static. You can change those colors. You can make it whatever color you want. Uh, but one of the nice features is you can see where the movement's happening. So if all of a sudden your particles are going crazy, you can see that because they're white. Where in Maya, if your particles are going crazy, sometimes it's hard to see because they're all just gray. All right, so this is simulating, it's going. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to zero again and hit the space bar. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna play back in close to real time, not perfectly real time, but we'll get a better sense of how this is flowing and we can look at it and see how much we're liking the uh, interaction here. All right, so that looks pretty decent. All right, now there's a bunch of parameters inside of this stuff that we can play with. The emitter is the emitter, just like in Maya, how many particles are coming out and what they're doing as they come out. Um, there is like randomizing that, but because of what we did here, we don't really need to randomize it. On the domain, this is what the particles look like. So here's that color. So blue is no motion, white is motion. Um, we can play with that. The kind of particles we have, spheres or arrows or whatever. Um, oops, there it is. So the particle type up here, this is where it gets interesting because this is where we can start to control um, different parameters of it. So right now, this going in here, it pretty much looks like water shooting into this. The viscosity for this is set to three. Water is a very uh, low viscosity, so it flows very nicely um, like that. However, if I reset this and I crank this up to like 150, and we save it again, and I hit play. What we're going to see is that this no longer acts like water, it's more acts like goo. So it's actually going to like plop in there and the particles are going to stick together a bit more. Okay, instead of just like kind of flying and, and falling apart, they're going to hit and go into that. Now you can take that viscosity up to like 200 or 300 or 400, depending on how thick of a surface you're trying to create. So if you ever seen those commercials where they have like a strawberry and they have um, chocolate pouring on it and the chocolate just kind of like dripping down, that's like one kind of viscosity. But then you see the other ones where it, it like falls on it and it's like um, taffy, right? It's like hot taffy or something or hot uh, caramel that's kind of melting and sticking right onto it. So that would be a higher viscosity. And then you could obviously go in between to find something in the middle, um, something like wax might be a very high viscosity when it's hard, but then as it gets warmer, it's gonna lower its viscosity and eventually get to something that's very like three-ish or so. Um, is there speed on this emitter? Yes, the speed's just controlling how many are coming out. I mean, it does control like the speed of it, but the biggest thing is that it's just controlling how many are coming out. You, you know what I mean, yeah. I was thinking about it too, because it looks like it's coming out fast, but it's, it's supposed to be globbing. Yeah, that's right. Oh, you're talking about this here, how fast yeah, it's angle. moving down there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, that also has to do with the angle of the cup and all that. I could change the angle of that. I could change the gravity. I could change the damping on it, because right now there's no damping. So it's actually picking up speed, or not picking up, but not slowing down at all. So all those parameters we could adjust. Now, we're not really getting a good effect with this, because it's just kind of going into the cup and sitting there, and it's actually kind of uh, boring. If I rewind it and hit play, you'll see. Right, it's got a lot of movement on there, okay? So let's reset this. I'll just turn the cup sideways. And we'll go into our demons and we'll add damping. Demons? Demons. How did I say that? <laughs> Gravity can be. Now you know how I feel. <laughs> it's a race. Whoever finds uh, damping first. Easy damping is some drag. Drag, that'll work too. Where's the drag? Drag force, there we go. Okay. Oh, damping's on the actual particles. All right, so drag strength is at point one. That should be good. All right, so we'll save. We'll hit A for simulate. Now I'm just hitting A to simulate. It's just this button here that says simulate. Simulate, stop simulation. And again, I may need to crank up that damping more. I may need to crank up the viscosity more. I need to crank up the gravity more. Adjust my scene scale. 
And this is all static stuff too. So when you see those commercials and you have that candy bar laying down and that goo is just going straight across it, the emitter and the cup are actually animated going across. And that's how they get that plopping look to it. Right, and it doesn't stand up very long. And then of course too, the more particles I have, the stickier they're gonna stay together. So that's another influencing uh, factor here. It'll look like one surface like that? Yes, it'll look like one big globby surface. Less particles will look, will, will look like Less particles will just kind of fall apart easier. So it might look like, um, I don't know, like little bits of, of taffy or something, or little bits of caramel. You can see it's kind of streaking here too a little bit. All right, let's see what that looks like. Let's reset that and add a little bit more viscosity. So let's go with 350. And if you set it too high, it'll actually emit and just kind of like stick in this one spot. <laughs> and it just kind of falls down. And just so we can see this a little bit easier, oops. I'm going to grab a piece of geometry, grab a sphere, scoot it up. Scale it up. All right. And then I'm also going to grab these guys, and I can set stuff on them too. So right now, it's set to bouncy, so actually the particles are hitting it and kind of bouncing off a little bit. So if I turn the stickiness up, and I do the same thing to base number one. Okay. But we should get those particles are now sticking to it, and the particles are sticking to themselves more, so we should be getting more of that kind of gooey rolling uh, look to it. And you could actually you set that viscosity high enough and the particles will actually like fold on top of itself like this was like a taffy type uh, surface. And you can see it's pretty much a sheet here. It's not like a fluid. It's not breaking apart. And also this, um, this geometry is pretty rough. Typically you can kind of set it up in a very rough mode. And then when you're ready, bring in your higher res geometry, not high res, higher res. So that your cup would actually be round and your sphere, even though this is round, is the exact shape of what you want it to collide with. So you can definitely see it's kind of like being a bit stickier here, a bit thicker uh, fluid as opposed to the water that was coming out and just spraying basically everywhere. And that's from that demon you put on it? Well the demon slowed it down, taking the viscosity up is what's thickening it also. That's the biggest thing is the, stick the viscosity. All right, so let's rewind that. And you can see how it's not like an entirely quick process but you do get some neat results pretty quick compared to something like Maya. You can definitely see that there. Look at how it hits. Watch where it hits here and then the other part just kind of hits and starts to fold down. Like that. That's more of like that caramel, chocolate, whatever it is pouring on top of it. Um, go to the end of this and then I can keep simulating it. Okay. Now this is like the fun part. For me it's, it's like incredibly fun just to go in there and just try to simulate different things, play with it, see what's happening. So far it hasn't crashed yet, which is wonderful. <laughs> Not yet. Um, so then what I want to do is I'm going to build a mesh. So I want to see what this is actually going to look like in a solid form. Right now it's just particles. So I go to the mesh menu and I go over here to particle mesh and I just click the particle mesh button and that creates this. And what this is, is it's a separate item. It's a separate particle creation object. And what we have to do is right click on it and say build. And what it does is it builds that particle for that object, okay? So here, there it is. If I hit zero, so I can see it in shaded mode, 
I'll be able to see what that gooey mess looks like. Okay, and you can definitely see it's holding its shape here. It's not running down the side or doing like splashy stuff. Yes, sir. Can you Yes, that's the next step. Okay, so apart from just that, we have a bunch of different settings that we can play with. So one of them, if I scroll down a touch, uh, da, 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 da. I probably scroll down too far. Item, UV mapping, there it is. I did scroll down. So one of them is polygon size. So if I look really, really close to this, you'll see how we have these little triangles. That polygon size is how big those triangles are. So the bigger the triangles are, the smoother the surface is gonna be, but also kind of like the bigger blobbier it's gonna be. So if I set this to like, let's just say 0.2, and then I right click and say build, you can see that it's definitely smoother, but we're not getting as much refinement in it, okay? So I'm gonna go back to this, I'm gonna set it back to 0 0.05, I'm going to build it again, and there it goes. Okay, it's right. It's not as detailed. Correct. Um, surface proximity is how uh, close it is to that surface. <clears throat> Point two five is obviously way too high. Point zero five is about what we were at before. There's a little bit of green stuff hanging out in here. That's gonna. Be, yeah. <laughs> is there a way to change the color and then change the color again while it's flowing? Yes. Well, what this would actually be doing is this would be rendered out inside of Maya. Okay. Once we're done with this mesh, we bring that into Maya and actually render it out. So inside there, we could change the color just to say that it's this color at the start and that color at the end and whatever else. Just by using um, like a ramp or something. Okay. Now this polygon size and this surface proximity are two of the options that we can play with. Inside of here, under the domain, there's also this radius, okay? This radius is basically what it does is it takes this particle, this little dot, and it says, okay, here's a dot here and a dot here. I'm gonna draw a circle around each dot and that is that radius. If those circles are touching, I'm going to build a shape, okay? If they're not touching, I'm not gonna build a shape. So another way we can kind of smooth this out is by faking it by making those uh, radiuses a little bit bigger. So I'll make this point Point 0.2, okay, right click on this again and then say build. And now it's gonna be a bit smoother. Now, like I said before, eventually what would happen is we would have millions of particles. If we have millions of particles, obviously this whole thing would be a lot smoother because we have millions of particles. All of those tiny things are now touching each other and then they would, um, they would work much better. Okay, so again, we can keep playing with this. There's also an auto polygon size, but I've never found this to have incredibly good results until today. <laughs> and I knew it was gonna happen too. Uh, but look at that, we can just use that number too. We can just turn it off, use that number, and then we're good to go. There we go, wonderful, okay. So other stuff that makes it look kind of cool are these filters. And what the filters do is they allow you to control kind of dynamically how the particles are, or how the mesh is being created. So instead of having just like um, a circle here and a circle here and a circle there and it draws these radiuses around them and creates this mesh, what it can do is say you have a bunch of particles clustered here, let's draw a mesh there for sure. But then you have some big spacing here. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna make it stretch out that mesh. And so what you would get is if you had a big hole in the center of this, it would allow that hole to be actually a little bit more stretchy and a little bit more um, stringy. Uh, if I look at the real flow stuff here, so you see these like little holes that are inside there, those little tendrils? That's where these are coming in because they have a filter put on there to control how these, these areas here get created, okay? Instead of it just being kind of like a cutoff, it's basically what it's doing. It's saying, here's a, a mesh, there's not a mesh. Well, there should be this gray area where it's kind of like a thinner mesh instead of just mesh or no mesh. And that's what that filter um, allows you to do. So you can turn that on and play with these. <clears throat> Typically the uh, thinning and the um, tension are the ones that I'll um, adjust. 
and then the steps is just how smooth you want that to be. Okay. Ew. Yeah, very ooey. <laughs> okay. So once we do this, the, the typical workflow is that we do our particles. We get our particles set up and simulated, and our particles are ready to go. And we've played it back, we've checked it out, the particles look good. Then we put the mesh on it. And then once we have the mesh on it, then we can just go back to the beginning and click that go ahead and make the mesh button. And what that should do, I have to click it. And what that's going to do is it's going to use your already generated um, mesh information and build it throughout. I clicked the wrong button again. Build the current sector map. Oh, there it is. I clicked the wrong button. So now what it's going to do is go through each frame and build that mesh. So it's not calculating the particles. All it's doing is building the mesh off of the particle movement that's already there. Okay. So what is great about this is that it just automatically does it. Now you'll see that even though I didn't calculate all the way to 240, that it actually has 240 frames loaded. And the reason it has that is because it's remembered all the stuff that I've already done. So all of that cache from before, it still has that kind of saved in the bank. So what's going to be kind of funny is that we're going to hit a certain point and our mesh is actually going to change to a different type of mesh because we don't have the stuff calculated for those specific items. Now we also have kind of like this thickness. So however thick that original um, item was, however thick this plane is here, that's how thick this item is. So if I made that thinner, if I made the other stuff thinner, my particles would be thinner. If I go over here and play with my particle settings, I can get that whole thing to be thinner there too as well. Why is it freaking out? It's not freaking out. I just said that it was cached. It's already cached here for some other simulation. So that's what it's showing. I never overwrote those particles. So I only cached it to like, I don't know, was it 60 or something? Just for the gooey ones. All right, I'll just hit escape because you don't need to see all those. So you can see here how these look really blobby. Blah, blah, blob. And right there, I don't know if you ever guys have watched, um, you can't do that on television. But that's like the stuff. You guys have no idea what I'm talking about. No idea. <laughs> I'm so old. <laughs> Nope, I don't know what that is. You guys are too young, I'm too old. We can't have this conversation. There we go. So that looks pretty neat how that's coming out and kind of creeping down there. That looks pretty cool. And then you can definitely tell the difference in this here, that kind of uh, shape. And this shape, that's like the intermittent one, and that shape. Okay, this definitely looks more watery. Now let me go into the particle mesh. I'm gonna turn the oops, I'm gonna turn the mesh filter on and say build the mesh here. And again, this is what's cool about it is that we can actually just go to any frame and say, let me see what the mesh is gonna look like. Um, I didn't turn any options on, so let me just set the options here. Build it yet? No. All right, I'm going to go higher on this. There we go. Okay. So by taking that up to 0.5, what I'm getting is this. So I'm getting more of these holes. I'm getting more of this like stretching inside here. There we go. And I can go to the frame before this that was already cached with the old settings. And that's what it looked like before. So you see how all of these are kind of like uniformly shaped blobs. But then when I adjusted my thinning, now we're actually getting like the stretching and the streaking of it. All right. So now what I can do is I'm going to take these guys here and I'm going to go to my display somewhere over here. There it is. And just turn those off just so I can see it. I can turn that off too because I don't need to see that. And I don't even need to see my particles. I can turn those off too. There we go. So this is kind of like the end game. This is what we're after. This is what we want to bring into our other scene. Uh, so if I open up Maya, while we're waiting for Maya to open up on the mesh here, there's actually a shader. Uh, here it is. Here's material. And I can choose kind of like preview materials. This is not what you would actually look like when it renders. 
because we're not rendering in real flow, we're rendering it inside Maya. So we could play with one of these settings just to do like, what does ink look like? So there's what ink would look like, not yet. Uh, I'm gonna go to the render button and I'm gonna hit the render this preview button. And what it's going to do is it's gonna show me in Maxwell what the rendering would look like. Now in here, Maxwell works a bit differently than, um, why am I at frame three? Oh, I clicked the wrong button again. One day I'll hit the right button. There we go. So I hit the fire button, that's the one I want to hit. So with Maxwell, it's actually a progressive render. And what that means is that it there's no basically like a stopping point to it. When you hit that fire button, it just renders it and then it gets better and better and better and better and better forever. Obviously there's a point where it's just not gonna get any better, but it gradually just gets better, okay? So there is no like, render it until it looks good. You render it for 20 seconds, it's gonna look one way. You render it for 30 seconds, it's gonna render look another way. You render it for two minutes, it's gonna look another way. Yes. And there's actually in their settings, I believe that's the one there, under settings here, you'll see that the image quality, nope, not that, the maximum frame time is 600 seconds. So what that means is that it's going to render it for a maximum of 600 seconds per frame. So what's cool about it though is that you can say, I need a preview of this, you know, I don't know how long each frame is gonna take, but I know I wanna see it tomorrow morning when I get in. There's seven hours before I get in, how many seconds is that, how many frames do I have, and you can calculate how much time per frame and when you get in, that rendering will be done. It may not look beautiful, but at least you'll be able to kind of see what it looks like. All right, so that was the ink one. That looked kind of horrible. Let's look at mercury fire. There we go. So again, where you can kind of see how the progression is working, where it looks kind of grainy, then it gets cleaner and cleaner and cleaner as it's going. And you can see the little tendrils that are in here and the little sp uh, splotches that are in there. You can also see the faceting kind of on here that's happening with that cup. So again, we'd actually want to bring in a high-res cup to do our final simulation, okay? So when we set it to be like uh, millions of particles, you can bring in a higher-res cup or a higher-res object. Let's see what another one looks like. Uh, beer. <laughs> Sure, I guess that's a beer. <laughs> no phone on it. All right, let's go back to here where this was, and then we'll see what this is going to look like right when it hits that. We'll make this one be honey. And what's cool is that you actually get to see what do the refractions look like, what does the inner details look like. Because sometimes it'll look chunky. Sometimes it'll look like too blocky to even like deal with. But that looks pretty good. That looks pretty much like honey would look, maybe a little bit, you know, brighter. All right. So now we're going to go into Maya. And inside Maya, I'm looking to see if it's there already. It's not. I'm going to go to my plugin manager. And in the plugin manager, there should be inside here a real flow button. There it is, real flow. Click and click. So in real flow, I'm going to import my mesh. So one of these buttons is importing mesh. That's import, export. Import SD file, I believe. No, nope, that's it. Import bin mesh. That one looks like a mesh. So then I just go to my folder. I go here. I go to 2550, work, real flow, uh, test cup, meshes. And right now there's nothing in my mesh. I'm just gonna verify there's nothing in objects, no. Okay, so inside of here, and sometimes it's set to default, in the last version it was set to default. So I'm gonna go to export uh, central, and just verify that my mesh is being exported. It says to export it. Um, export all meshes. Done. Test cup, test cup, yes. Oh, it's an Alembic file. That's different. 
All right, so that's even easier. Now we can just import the Olympic file. And show our interface. What was that one? There we go. All right, so there it is. We hit play, and we get nothing. Where's my mesh? Import. Scene root. All right, let's set that to a different export central. Oh, there it is. There so I'm going to export my cache, export all meshes. Bring that back in. Okay, so now it's coming in. Here we go. <laughs> oh my. We can't blame Maya for this one. It's a bin, that's what I want. Oh, I lost my mesh. That's why I didn't do that. So what happened was probably when I clicked it, it was exporting it to a different mesh. So when I changed it, it needed to rewrite the mesh out. It's an odd thing, but whatever. And then you could also do um, soft body simulations too. So stuff like end cloth you could do. So you could actually have like, um, I, use the example of like a candy bar or something like a squishy candy bar just kind of falls and it kind of plops down and you can have something pouring on top of it which is kind of neat. All right, so let's try this again. All right, so there goes my mesh pouring out. Okay, now this time as I'm simulating it, because I have the mesh already on and I'm re-simulating my particles, what it's doing is it's rewriting out those particles and building the mesh at the same time. Okay, so we don't need to watch the whole thing because it should be exporting it now and I should be able to go in here and there it is. Yes, wonderful. So now when I hit play, you can see there's the mesh. Okay, so I would just play the whole thing out, let it export and then we would have just this, just this mesh in here that we could do whatever we want with. We could texture it, um, light it, render it out. Um, and it turns out pretty neat. You don't do any of the rendering in real flow, huh? No. It, you do test rendering in real flow and that's it. It looks great. Yeah, it did. But that's the Maxwell renderer. Um, Arnold's another renderer. Uh, V-Ray's on there. Should be working now. Yeah, yeah it was working yet. Yeah, um, Wednesday, whatever day. The other day I was here, it went Monday. And all of them. We're all of them. All right. So this one here, I'm just going to show. Um, well, that's not going to work. Let's delete this. I'm going to create just a cube real quick. I'm going to put in a bunch of divisions. Mod 
modify center pivot. I'm just going to take this one and I'm just going to export this to RealFlow. And then under my import, there it is. Okay. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to make this a soft body. And I'm going to make a ground plane. export it like that. I guess I want to export it as Olympic scene. No, I guess I'll export it as an OBJ. Because the Olympic is actually bringing in the uh, animation. I don't want the animation to come with it. Now we go back. Object. Real flow object. A non triangular face has been detected. <laughs> it's always something. So we triangulate it. There we go. Export selection. Yes. Success. Okay. So now I should be able to move it. There we go. And duplicate it. And rotate it. And set this to be a soft body. Set this one to be a soft body. And then add gravity into the mix. And then save and simulate. And so now these are going to be soft bodies. So when they fall, they're actually going to like flop onto each other. Um, and it looks pretty neat. And again, all of these things could slash should be able to interact together. If I added particles in here, I think last time that was when it crashed when I kept adding particles into my geometry. Oops. And I did forget to make my ground a passive rigid body so it catches it. And I'll give this a little rotation while we're at it. Rotation. And then of course those parameters. The second you choose something to be an active, a passive, a rigid, or whatever, it'll give you different parameters based on that of what it's going to be doing. So whether it's a soft plastic, a hard plastic, or whatever, it lets you adjust those. And again, it's going pretty slow um, because they're actually interacting now. So it takes all those points that I have on there is going very slow because of that. But eventually it'll hit a point where it actually speeds up a little bit like it is here. So now we can rewind this and see. <laughs> Pretty cool. And then we can go to this point, and then we can say, let's make a circle emitter. And this is, again, it's, it's so cool because uh, as long as it doesn't crash on us, um, we should be able to just start like adding stuff into this. Yeah, go ahead. So what it's doing now is that at frame 107, it's not going to go back and calculate um, where the particles are at before this. It's just going to start making particles right at that frame. So I can very quickly kind of just like slap stuff together and see what happens. I can I flop these things on the ground. I'm going to create some particles and throw those on top of it. And we'll see what happens. There's also on each one of these objects, there is a make initial state and then use initial state. So I could have those start right there on the ground. That way when I rewind it, they don't jump back up to the top. They just stay right there. There we go. And you can see now they're hitting it. This is again interacting more like water. It's not pouring because it's shooting the discs straight down. But again, we could add the little pouring cup, have it pour on top of it, um, make it thicker, animate this stuff going across it. Just so you can see how to animate. And go back to about there, right there. We just go to our position and we just set a keyframe here. We move up a little bit, pull it over, set a keyframe. Move it over a little bit, 
move this over. Oops, I went the wrong direction. That's way far away. What is it doing? There we go. All right, so it goes there. And then we come over here, and we're going to go. The pivot's off because I'm not straight up and down with that. There we go. Okay. So now if I just go back to here, before the particles started getting emitted, and I just re-simulate, it'll just restart the simulation right there, now with the animation of this thing sliding back and forth. In Maya, if we were to try to do anything like this, we have to rewind it all the way to the beginning every time and tell it to go, and then rewind it to the beginning and then tell it to go. We could even have this thing, oops, I don't want to reset it, um, rotate upwards, not you, this and now it'll kind of go up and then come down and land so it's not like a pouring but it does give you a little bit different look um, than just these discs going down actually to get this same the exact same look <laughs> shoot it going that way. Um, you can do I can take the speed down I can add some randomness to this Uh, but that's all I can do for that emitter. Um, and then the rest of it would be just grabbing the particles and just tweaking them. So adding some maybe this in external pressure to it. Let's rewind it a touch. Yeah, anything there. <laughs> that external pressure is too much. Uh, Yeah, no, I'd probably just use the cup instead. Okay, but now those should interact with those, and then again, you can kind of play with it to get, you know, some very, very cool stuff um, happening. And then just the last thing I want to show is just if you do have a cup like this, and then you're like, I want to fill that cup up, here's that fill object. So we just click on it. And now it'll fill it up. Now what it did here is that it filled up like the perimeter of it, but not the inside. So we just have to go to this setting. Make sure I'm on the emitter, there it is. Make sure it's set to fill. Click that object, fill volume, yes. Remove layers, jittering, I'll add some jittering to this. I'll reset it. Set to fill, yes. And set to erase. And that should have filled it. Instead of doing just that layer there. Now oh, whatever. That's how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> Now this object is still dynamic, even though it's a fill volume, it's still dynamic, it's still colliding with it. Um, so you have to actually turn that off. Oh, is that what it did? Nope, there's no crashing yet. It's not crashing. Uh, no, it just did the outside. Hmm. Race, cell size, surface offset. Face. All right, there's something clicked on that's not working correctly, but that's typically how you do it. I just have to click that one button somewhere. All right, but that's something, you know, take some time. In Maya, obviously, we can play with the fluid effects. We can play with some of the end cloth. We can play with some of the fur, some of the whatevers. Real flow, you can play with these settings too, just to get an idea of um, different things that you can do with it. Um, there is actually like a real flow newsletter now, which is kind of funny.
where they have a newsletter where they have like tutorials in it and what's going on and places that it's been used. So you can sign up for um, the newsletter and get like a newsletter about real flow and kind of get inspired um, with some of the stuff that they're using it for. Because this is just kind of like the entry level point of it. Once you get into this, it gets into a lot more deeper stuff um, like adding um, Hybrido um, and this is kind of like Bifrost, but it has a lot more stuff in it where you can actually simulate like oceans and uh, bodies of water inside there. Um, doing some of the object dynamic stuff, doing some of the scripting stuff. There's like Python scripting you can do inside here. Um, lots of cool stuff. Okay. All right. So that's that.